Well, traders, I'm done trading today. I want to go quickly through some interesting thing that we've seen today. And it has to do with uh, what we learned yesterday in the Style Trader course. So if you've been yesterday with me in the Style Trader course, this does apply today. Well, we talked about uh, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And I want to discuss this uh, a little bit, the relationship between the S&P and the NASDAQ. Hold on a second. I want to put up the charts here. Uh, before I do that, uh, you can see my account here. I had several trades today. Um, not a big day for me. I mean, I'm green and I like it. But uh, you can see that I'm up almost $2,000 and I still have uh, some shares in uh, Apple and Starbucks short. And doing well, so I'm up like $2,500 uh, $2, or so. So that's a nice green day, a small nice green day, just, my, just like I had really yesterday. Um, but I did start my day red with uh, two or maybe three green red trades and then move to green territory with the help of the market. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq and the relationship between both. So that was an interesting thing to see today because if we take a look at the S&P, which you can see here on the top and the Nasdaq that you see here. Oh, sorry, that's not the S&P. Now here's the S&P. Hold on a second there. So, okay, so we look at the S&P 500. Initially, we started with a gap down today. So when you see a gap down, when the market starts with a gap down, you always expect it to gap and go, meaning to move under the lows. It's more likely to happen. I mean, sometimes it doesn't, but when the market starts down, I think it was like 2% or so, then you expect it a little bit less than 2%. You expect it to come down. It did initially come down. First 10 minutes usually are not that important. And then it moved over the highs. Now, at that point, I was going long. I had a long trade in uh, BA that worked out fine. You can see here the results. So it was like uh, almost $5,000 in profits. And that what started taking me out of uh, the hole that I was in. But I, at that point, I did not know if I should trust the market or shouldn't trust the market. Because, you know, the market did move over the highs. When I say the market, I mean the S&P 500. The S&P did move over the highs. But then it was still down like 2%, maybe 1.5%. I'm not sure at that point. It was down. And when the market, even if it moves up over the highs in a big gap down, you don't trust it. So any red candles you're seeing could be the start of a pullback. We discussed that today. And then that was a very interesting thing to see at the time that the S&P was still going sideways right over here in the middle of the range, really, where it started. You could see the, the Nasdaq at the same time moving to a new low. That's why you always have both charts on. You always look at the S&P and you look at the Nasdaq. So there's the SPY, that's the QQQ. And look at what happened here. That time now, as you can see here, is 10.15. Nasdaq came down under the lows at 10.15. Let's take a look at where the S&P was at 10.15. So that's where the S&P was at 10.15, in the middle of the range. You couldn't have an idea whether the S&P is going to move over the highs or come under the lows. But, as we discussed in the trading room, it was more likely to come down. And that was the time where we started shorting. The reason we started shorting is because... Um, you know, uh, the Nasdaq was under the lows. The S&P started down, was down approximately 2% at that point. Therefore, if you put in everything together, it's more likely to come down under the lows too. But it does not always do so because the Nasdaq doesn't always push the S&P down. And what counts really is where the S&P is and not where the Nasdaq. Institutional traders are only watching the S&P 500. They're not watching the Nasdaq. But sometimes the Nasdaq is your pre-warning, is your crystal ball. So you look at the Nasdaq. It just broke down under the lows at 10.15. S&P is in the middle of the range, but it's down 2%. Therefore, you assume that it's more likely for the S&P to come down. That's when we started shorting. That's when we took Facebook short. That's when we added to Facebook short. And then we took Starbucks short. And uh, Scott took uh, mRNA later and, and stuff like that. So everything really started clicking in when we expected the market to move down under the lows. We also know that 60% of the movement of the stock that you're trading uh, is, has to do with the S&P direction. That's what the institutional traders are doing. 
Therefore, we expected the S&P to come down. We were right. The S&P did come down under the lows. And we had some nice spar shares, Facebook, uh, Starbucks, a small winner, mRNA and, st and, and things like that. So again, expecting market direction is a big tool when you're trading. Expecting market direction with the help of the Nasdaq is also very, very important. You should be watching both S&P and Nasdaq in five minute candles, always in front of your eyes, always trying to understand where they're going and then making a decision where you whether you move long or short based on this and the quantity as well. For example, when Facebook came down, we added to that trade. So it, it became the actually the trade that took me out from red territory to green territory. I've got a $6,000 uh, winner in Facebook, which really was th that when I took my Facebook partial, that was the point where I moved to green territory. So again, adding to a stock when the market is about to come under the laws and then coming under the laws, that was the big change. Expect market, market direction, always watch the S&P and the Nasdaq. Now, one more thing I want to discuss here before we go, before I go, is the daily of the S&P 500. It's very in important to understand the daily of the S&P 500. Now, here's the coronavirus crash. We came down all the way from here to there. And then we've got the pullback. The pullback, I don't need to look at Fibonacci here, it's approximately 50%, a bit, maybe a bit more than 50%. So we did have a fine pullback from the lows. We are uptrending, as you can see here. We've got higher highs here. Not Did not get a new higher low, but uh, we're only going to get that if the market's going to start moving higher and then move over the recent high. I think we've got now a very, very clear understanding that um, if we're going to move over this recent high, we're probably going to recover and move higher, or we're going to come back to the lows or just pull back big time from where we are right now. I don't know if we're going to move to a new low. But I just want to remind you that usually uh, big crashes like we experienced recently usually come in two waves. First one we've seen, second one we did not see. I say usually come in big waves. I didn't say it has to come in big waves. Just technically speaking here, we still don't know what's going to happen. We, we, we definitely do know that we're in one of the world's greatest ever crisis uh, and we just don't know how the markets are going to respond and what's going to happen next but we did see the market coming down yesterday we see the market coming down stronger today S&P is currently down two point almost 2.9 percent 288 Nasdaq 3.8 there's a big big day down so we are coming down in a big way today and, uh, you know, oil prices crashing, maybe that's what took the market down. We don't know exactly what's, if the market is going to continue coming down or not. But just take a good look at the S&P 500. That's a very interesting point where we are right now. This could continue. So after these two days, the next day, like tomorrow, if the market is going to continue coming down, I'm playing the same game I played when the market was coming down strong in these days. So these are the days that earned me more than $1 million, the days here. Are we going to have another leg, big leg down now? I don't know. This could happen. The risk is greater because the first time down is uh, very important. There's a lot of fear. Second time down, I'm not sure. We'll have to see what happens. But I can definitely tell you that if the market is going to come down tomorrow, the same way as it's coming down today, I'm going to be all in with higher quantities. I did not trade high quantity today. Today, You can see for my losers that uh, my winners and my losers are at around $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, $6,000. I had two losers in IBM. That's why I'm down almost $9,000. That's two, four thousand something losers here. So I'm still not in with my uh, new regular quantity, my new crash regular quantity, which is much higher than my usual, actually double size or even more than double size than my regular. I just played my regular size today. And I, as you can see from my winners and my losers, I'm, I'm not taking the risk, but I did see the market moving down in a big way today. And I don't know what's coming next. As you can see now, Nasdaq just moved under the lows, uh, go back to the S&P 
five minute candles that's how we should be looking at it it also came down on the lows I'm seeing some uh, fear starting all over again and tomorrow if the market is going to come down I'm going to be all in all in means I'm going to take greater risks uh, I'm going to use more buying power and and I'm going to take a big risk I mean it's, it could be a I, I just know right now that if the market is going to come down tomorrow I'm going to have a big winner day or a big loser day that's what I expect will happen tomorrow but if the market is going to move up I'm not going to trust it I will pay, play in the direction that uh, the market moves because I always move with the market although maybe I think it should come down but it doesn't matter what I think what matters really is where the market's going so if the market is going to move up tomorrow I'm okay with that I'm just going to play with my regular size hoping to have a green day but if the market's going to change direction like it did today and come down I'm going to be all in this could happen early this could happen late I'm going to take a big risk tomorrow so nice two green days to start my week but I do expect some it could be a very interesting week let's let's wait and see what's coming uh, the next few days um, so traders thank you very much for being here with me today enjoyed my day and I'm um, going to see you all tomorrow take care bye traders